everyone, this is Jessica of Into the Warren. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about knitting, crocheting, and yarn dyeing. I have a small yarn dyeing business called Into the Warren as well, and I dye yarn for all fiber artists. And it's about two months old now, but it's really done really well in such a short amount of time, and I've had a lot of fun and every day I'm coming up with new ideas of what I want to do next and most of the things that I dye I share on my Facebook and Instagram pages a lot more quickly than I do on YouTube so if you want to follow along and see what I'm up to the links are below in the description. My goal today is just to share some things I've been working on with you because it's sometimes fun to watch what other people are working on and I think this week two weeks has had a theme for sure and the theme is socks. I just started knitting socks. I knit my first pair a couple weeks ago. I was always concerned that I wouldn't understand how to knit socks because I am a relatively new knitter as well but with some help from YouTube and taking my time and reading the directions I did knit my first pair of socks DK weight socks and then I loved it so much I wanted to try other patterns so the next pattern I did is a fingering weight sock yarn pattern which obviously means it takes longer because it's thinner yarn um, but I really really love it and I also learned magic loop now my first pair of socks I use double pointed needles I don't really have an issue with double pointed needles but um, I learned magic loop and I find that if you hear noises Brooke, my toddler, is supposed to be taking a nap. She doesn't want to take a nap, and she's just playing. So if you hear the monitor with her talking, that's what that is. She's talking to her stuffed animals. Anyway, I thought, let me try some of my fingering weight yarn that I have dyed myself and see what it looks like all knitted up in a sock. So I don't know if I showed this to you last week or last video, but I'm going to show it to you one more time. This is the yarn that I was using. This is called Claude's Lilies. And Claude's Lilies is my colorway inspired by Claude Monet and his water lily paintings. And this is 75% uh, superwash merino and 25% nylon. That nylon gives a little more durability when you are knitting socks because you're going to be stepping, you know, your feet, you're going to be stepping on the ground, you're going to be stepping in shoes. You want a little bit of, you know, that durability so they don't get holes and worn out so fast. So this is a pretty good um, base for socks. And so I rolled it all up in a ball and I created the first sock, which is this one. I'm pretty sure I showed this to you last time, but just as a refresher. And I really love how this sock turned out. Maybe I didn't finish it the last time I was working on it. But this is what it looks like. This is the Hermione's Everyday Sock. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, which I'll link below. And this one was a little challenging for a new sock maker, sock designer, sock person. But I really like how it turned out. And it's really cool. There's like this really cool like texture here. And I love how the heel has the color striping and then... I don't know I just like it and then this is the first time that I've done the Kitchener stitch which was um, very I mean it was pretty easy you just have to like in your mind keep track of what what you're on and like make sure you're not taking the wrong loops off the needle but anyway one of these done it took a little while just because it was my first time doing magic loop and I was um, struggling with the little spacing like the laddering that happens if you don't pull tight enough but I got it, I figured it out, and I can't wait to cast on the next one. I just uh, was working on another pair of socks, so this is a little behind. Now the second pair of socks is that I worked on is part of a knit along on Instagram, and I'm so bad at names. I can see it in my head. I want to say the designer is called Tieflin Knits, but I could be wrong. I'm going to link it below. But she's doing a knit along for the Artist Garden Socks. And basically, it's a 
knit along where as you're working on it, as you're doing the socks, you take pictures that gains entries to the contest, the knit along contest. The giveaway is a fade set, which is really awesome. But the reason why I love this pattern, and I'll show you it in just a second, you can actually just grab any scrap fingering weight yarn you have, anything, any colors that you have lying around and you're knitting two or three at a time. Now I knit two colors at a time, but they also have the pattern for three colors at a time. So whichever you prefer, but I took yarn that either A, I just had a little bit left of, or B, it's like yarn I dyed but I wasn't extremely happy with and I didn't feel like I wanted to sell it and I was just keeping it. And um, throughout the pattern I was like, ooh, this is an ugly sock, but honestly, now that it's done, I love it. So here is an artist um, garden sock. And you can see there's a lot of color changes in here. So at the top I have like this green, I'll show you, it's not the prettiest. It was like a yarn mop that I had that soaked up some green and some browns that I was using. And I mix it with my Halloween Howl colorway, which is in my uh, Etsy shop. If you're interested, you can just follow the link in the description. But I mixed, I did two at a time, the green and the Howl. Then I cut the Howl and added the orange, which is another yarn mop. As you can see, it's like a greenish orange. It was soaking up orange from my Halloween pumpkin dyeing. So you switch to that, then you do the heel flap, and I moved it to this bluish red skein that I did that was just a test that I didn't particularly like. So I mixed that, and then I went for, and then I cut the blue and went to Ghost, which is one of my other Halloween colorways. And then back to the blue, and then blue and green, and then howls in here a little bit and then back to the orange so I just mixed it in the pattern it tells you when to cut yarn and you don't have to necessarily go exactly like the pattern says but this is the result now I do have two it is being blocked but I'll show it to you this one's wet but so here are the two socks and the cool thing um, about the two together is like I don't know, they just, it's just faster because it's thicker and it just has a cool like effect, I don't know. But anyway, when I wear these, these are really pretty and I can't wait for the other one to dry so that I can wear it, but yeah. So I need to take a picture of these two socks together as my like final entry to the artist garden knit along. I think you have to finish at least one by July 10th, which is just a couple days, but honestly, if you focus enough, the first sock I did, I did in two days, like less than two days. Um, so I will link it below because there is still time if you want to enter. Okay, so that's that. And then, now I have to do my little disclaimer. This is for um, a gift for my sister-in-law. So if you're watching this, please stop watching this so I can show the progress of your birthday present that is now late. My sister-in-law's birthday is on the 4th of July. And I colored, I told you in my last video, I hand dyed um, some yarn um, in colors that she likes. And I started working on, I think it's called the Lemon Scone at Home Cowl, which is also a free pattern for a limited time on Ravelry. And I am about just under halfway through, I believe. But it's just this cowl and lace weight yarn. Now it's all squished because, you know, it's on these short needles, but you actually crochet bobbles. Like you get your crochet needle out and you do the bobbles in um, crochet and there's seed stitch and then you get to this, I just finished this lace section that's really hard to see because it's not been blocked. And then you go, you do seed stitch in between each section. So I'm on the seed stitch again but I think it's really hard to tell, but I think the colorway is really pretty. I think that the cowl is gonna be really pretty, but again, I'm, I'm about halfway through. I was knitting like crazy last night trying to get a good portion done since it's taking longer than I wanted it to, 
we were gonna go on a trip and bring this with us for her birthday party but now that um, this virus is getting worse and worse in Florida we were like uh, no we're not going so that is the progress on this cowl and I can't wait for it to be done and I'll try to remember to take a picture or show you guys before I mail it to her but um, I really like the color I think these this colorway would be really pretty as a sock too I love that like sh that bright um, green that's like hinted throughout so I've been working on that that is like my priority right now to try to get that done okay then I'm gonna move into yarn dyeing stuff okay since I started dyeing I've always been thinking I've been thinking about like themes because I like themes I like the art of naming yarn too I think that's really important I mean the color is important but I also like the creativity behind what you name it and I've just done my fall theme and those yarns I have a few left they're limited edition and they're in my shop but I wanted to move on to the next step and do something I've been thinking about for a while and that is dyeing yarn that's inspired by the movie Labyrinth. Labyrinth is a movie with David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, my, my memory is so bad. And it's from the 80s and it's a Jim Henson movie. And so there's Muppets involved and real people. And basically um, the main character, Sarah, her brother, is taken by the Goblin King, who is David Bowie, or Jareth in the movie, and she has 13 hours to get through the labyrinth to save her brother. And it's always been like one of my favorite movies, and I wanted to do some like yarn that was inspired by that movie because it's such a cool movie. Now, that film is very, the coloration of the scenes in that movie are very muted and very orangey and gray um I don't know how else to describe it it has like this veil of color that's a little more I don't know how to describe it if you've seen it maybe you will understand what I'm trying to say it's very orangey and gray not bright colors or anything like that and um so I wanted to kind of be true to that so let me show you what I've dyed so far the first one I dyed is called Turn Back Sarah, which is what David Bowie says to Sarah when she says she's going to save her uh, baby brother. Sorry, my husband came in with groceries. As I was saying, you're going to hear sounds in the background because Brooke's still not sleeping. Um, this is Turn Back Sarah, which is one of the quotes from the movie where David Bowie is telling Sarah to just give up and don't try to save her little brother, and of course she's not going to listen, but... In the movie, David Bowie's character, the Goblin King, he wears a lot of like white, tan, black, silver. He's got like silver eyeshadow, black eyeliner, very 80s. And so this colorway is inspired by that. He also, um, in the scene where he's dancing with Sarah, he has a little bit of blue in his jacket, a blue, dark blue sparkle. So that's kind of where this was inspired from. The second colorway that I come up with is called Rocks Friends. And it's this reddish orange um, colorway and it is inspired by Ludo who's one of the characters one of the Muppet characters in the film and he can talk to the rocks and the rocks can move and he says rocks friends in it it's really cute so that is inspired by Ludo and here's the colorway all of these are worsted weight 100% superwash merino in the shop but if you need a different weight or you need a different quantity um, you can always send me a message on Etsy or in my email which is listed below and I'll be happy to help you with whatever you need. And then I have this blue tonal yarn, semi-solid. Um, this one's called I Said Hello, which is inspired by the little blue worm that Sarah meets in the beginning of the movie when she's trying to figure out which way to go in the labyrinth. And he says hello and she says are you did you say something did you say hello and he says no I said hello but that's close enough so it's kind of like one of the famous quotes in that movie so this blue is inspired by him I didn't put red in it he is got a red um, scarf and red eyes but I didn't want it to look patriot 
Not that patriotic yarn is bad, um, but I didn't want it to look like the American flag, I guess, if that makes sense. Because um, then I think it would be, it wouldn't work. But anyway, so I just did the blue. And the last one for the big skeins is Between the Stars. And Between the Stars is a colorway that has a little more color in it. This is based on the song where Sarah and the Goblin King are dancing together in like this fake dreamy masquerade. And he, David Bowie singing the song, um, and this is one of the quotes, lyrics of the song. And I wanted to pull a little more color in this one. So his jacket is like this blue, this dark blue. And Sarah has some pink eyeshadow, pink uh, lipstick. She has a dress that has white and a little bit of this yellowish gold. And um, I put some speckling in here. So it's a little bit brighter than the film and it's a little bit different. But I wanted to give a little more color as well. It just kind of gives you a little extra color. And then the last thing that I have to show you is a fade set for Labyrinth and this fade set has eight mini skeins which is they're all 25 grams and they're DK weight and that equals to 200 grams of yarn or approximately um, 460 yards they look like let's see if I can spread them out and get them in the right order. They look, it's hard to do, too many. They look like this. I might have gotten too many. No, these are all of them. This fade set goes from this dark steely blue like, um, like I've been using in the other labyrinth colorways and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and then it starts to get these orangey colors all the way to the end so it goes from blue to orange but in like a fade and so these are in my shop as a set and they all have speckling the same like this green greenish and silvery not silvery but gray you can't really show silver on this but it's like a silver gray and greenish speckling they were all dyed their colors and then as a group they were all put in the pan and speckled together to keep it consistent this set is a great uh, kit to get if you want to do something with fades or color changes like a shawl um, I have just purchased a pattern from Tieflin, Tieflin Knits and I can't think I want to say it's like the love shawl or something I'll, again I'll put it below and you can do it's the same person who made the sock pattern the artist garden sock pattern and you can do two fingering weight yarns together or DK one DK and I th I bought that pattern because I want to use this fade kit to test it out with the shawl just to see what it would look like um, in that way and I think it'll be really pretty so once I have a couple of these other projects done that's my next project is to test out the fade kit so that's really it that that's a lot it's a pretty good amount I wish I had more projects to show you but the ones I've been working on are a little more time-consuming but still haven't done the sleeve of my sweater still haven't finished um, or worked on the the red Alanis sweater just because I've had other things to get off my plate first but they're just sitting in their project bags waiting for me but other than that that's really it if you have any questions or comments please post below send me an email you can follow me on my social media and check out my yarn shop if you're interested in getting some hand dyed yarn and I think that's about it other than that I just want to say make sure you're wearing your mask Make sure you're staying away from people, don't get sick. I know that people have been saying that, you know, the death rate's not very high, and maybe that's true, but, you know, it's sad for anyone to die from this, and um, 
if you can prevent it by putting this little piece of fabric over your face or at least reduce the risk I don't see I don't see the harm in that and please try to stay safe it's a scary time right now and um, you know so I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you again soon bye